following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Fa, Dorn, and Os. These three runes relates, of course, with the runic Futhark. This is how it is called the alphabet, as we say in English, of the runes. It is called Futhark. If you see the graphic of uh, all the letters of the runic alphabet, you will find the position of each letter according to the runes and that's why we call it Futhark, naming it from the F-U-T-H-O-R-K, the first six runes of that alphabet. In English, we call it alphabet from the Greek alpha, beta, which is the beginning, even though we utilize the Latin alphabet, which is the A, B, C, D. So, the first letter of this footark <coughs> is the letter F related with the rune Pa. And uh, this rune Fa is the very beginning of this alphabet. And the very end, uh, as you can see there in the graphic, is uh, the rune Otila, which is, or takes the basis of what we say in Greek, Omega. When you uh, investigate the Greek alphabet, you find two O's. The first is what is called the Omicron. The Omicron, or the small O. And the last one is the Omega, or the big O. So in the same way that in the Greek alphabet we find the small O and the big O, as well in the Futhark, we find, as you can see in the graphic, the fourth letter, which sounds like O or A. That's why uh, sometimes we say Futhark or Futhark in order to name these uh, letters of the runic alphabet. And, of course, that O, A that we see there is what we call the rune Os which is exactly the opposite, as you can see, of the first rune, which is a rune Fa. 
the rune fire has its arms upward, while the rune oz has the arms downward. And uh, it is intimately related with the other O, which is at the very end, uh, which is called Otila. So we are going to study both of them <coughs> in relation also with the third rune, which is called Thorn, or also Dorn, with D of day, Dorn, which is uh, a thorn in German. That's why we call it Thorn, English, or Dorn, German, that ruin. And as you can see, the shape is directly related with uh, Otila, which has precisely that thorn on top of the X, which is a modification, of course, of the rune Gibor that we already talked about. In that uh, uh, sense, we understand, of course, about this footark. Uh, if you wonder from where this position of these runes or letters are coming from, we find that, that uh, it is coming from the Edda, the, the so-called German Bible. The Edda is a poem written, and uh, there are many uh, chapters there in that book. One of them is called the Songs, I mean, the Runic Song of Odin. And in that runic son of Odin, you find exactly 18 verses. And of course, that's why most of the uh, students of runes, they said that the very end of the runic alphabet, or the futhark, is the G, which is the rune Gibor. Because according to that uh, uh, song of Odin about the runes, that is the last one that he mentions. But we find, of course, other, other, these other runes which are at the very bottom of this uh, square, which also uh, relate to the futhark. If you see, for instance, uh, the rune Otila, which is the O at the very bottom, right? You see that is related to the Gibor or the X, with the exception that it has, as I said, the thorn on top of it. And the D, which is before that, is also the same Gibor with two lines. So the letters in the very bottom that we already talked about in our uh, runes, the lectures, relates, of course, to the letters above or modifications of these letters and then to explain the language of the runes that are written in the different places in Europe and in, in, in America. So, and uh, we like this chart, instead of 18 letters, 24. Because the number 24 relates, of course, to the Arcanum 24th, which is the Arcanum of the Divine Mother, the Weaver. She is weaven in the loom of God. And in order to weave in the loom of God, she utilizes the 24 letters of the runic alphabet in order to create The word enters the womb of Mary. Remember that. It is written that in the beginning was the word. And the incarnation of the word is a mystery that is hidden within the womb of the divine mother Mary, Isis. 
and different names according to different religions. This is why when we talk about the Futhark of all the letters, we like the number 24, the weaver. Now, this uh, runes, fa, dor, and oz, as many times we uh, explain in different lectures, relate to the center of the Aztec calendar and also to the whole stone. If you can uh, uh, see very clear the rune Dorn, or that is also called Otila, relates to the center of the Aztec calendar when you see very clear the thorn on top of the head of Tonatiu. And of course, the shape of the rune is seen very clear in that uh, face, the center of the Aztec calendar. And the next uh, graphic is a graphic in which we show the position of those runes in relation with our physicality. As you can see, the rune fa that is done when we uh, put the arms in a straight position with the body. The left arm a little bit above the right. Now, the rune dorn is represented, as you see here, with the two arms making two thorns, or two Ds, as we say, because the rune dorn or thorn is the letter D. That, in the Hebrew alphabet, if you remember, has a shape of a triangle. So therefore, we see two Ds here. We said the thorn and thorn representing that rune, which is also called Otila, and that different and has different shapes. And in the right, we find the rune Os, as it is represented in the Futhark, as the fourth letter or fourth rune, which they are with the arms pointing downwards. That's why we said is right the opposite of the rune fa. And of course, we are going to explain in which way is this opposition of these runes related with our own physicality and psychology in the science of alchemy. Here we find again in the next uh, graphic the Aztec stone pointing the north, south, west, east, northeast, northwest, north, southwest, and southeast. In order to show you also that with this uh, graphic, you can make the shape also of the rune Fa in the right, taking the northeast and the east as the arms. And in the opposition, in the west, you take then the southwest with the two arms down in order to form those runes that are shown there in the abstract manner. Remember that always we state that all the letters are hidden in the Aztec calendar, but you need to see with the imagination all of them 
hidden in this way because uh, this is how the masters left it in order for us to study it. Now, going to the rune far, sometimes you find that the shape of this rune, the arm, the right arm, comes from the very bottom of the vertical line, and the left arm is in the middle. A modification, of course, of uh, such a rune. And uh, if you observe that way in which they also make that rune, which is like that, vertical line, and one line protruding from the very bottom and the other in the middle. It has the shape of the letter Shin of the Hebrew alphabet. The letter Shin, as you remember, uh, symbolizes the fire. <coughs> when we see the letter Shin, it is the fire. And in Hebrew, in order to write fire, you write the letter Aleph and the letter Shin together, and you pronounce Esh. So as you can see, the letter Aleph, as we show in many lectures, symbolizes air. And the letter Shin is fire. But it is very significant that in order to say fire in Hebrew, you put the two letters. One that is the air and the other is the fire. And in many lectures we explained that the air, which symbolizes the Holy Trinity, that enters through our nostrils, represent the three aspects of the Akashic force. Or the Akashic fire, which is Keter, Chokmah, Binah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that enters through the nose, and that air in the lungs purify the Shin, which is the blood, the fire, in our organism. And that's why the fire, the Esh, and the Aleph, are always together in our blood. So from that point of view, we say that fire really has air within. Or in other words, has the Aleph. And that's why when we talk about the rune Fa, we are talking about also that letter Aleph, which is the air. Fire and air are above. Water and earth are below. And in many lectures related with the Hebrew alphabet, we talk about this. But let us remember again, in order to understand this marvelous rune fa. When we take the first letter of the Greek alphabet, we know that the first one is Aleph, or I mean uh, Alpha. I said Aleph because really it's the same, you see. Aleph, Alpha. Come from the same origin. But when you said Aleph or Alpha, taking the origin of this uh, word or the root of this word then you find that the word alpha is made by two words a a l l and the rune fa and then we find the word all fa
all the fuss. And of course, that fa we had to discover. What is that F that we are talking about here that is hidden in Aleph and all uh, Alpha, all, uh, all Fs, all Fs, all Fires? Remember that the letter F in Sanskrit show us for hot. For hot is fire. In English and in Spanish is fuego. So this letter F really relates to that fire that we are talking about here. That in English is easy to see. And also relates to Father, which is the beginning of the male force, and family. So the letter F, the ruin fa, begots, engenders. And in it, we find, as, as I said, the mixture of Air and fire, all fast. If you look at the shape of the rune fa, you discover that the vertical line relates to your spinal column. And the two arms of that spinal column are the two cords, Ida and Pingala, that we mention in many lectures. And through Ida and Pingala and Shushumna, we explain in other lectures, is how the three primary forces create within us. The three primary forces descend from the absolute and enter into our nostrils, into our physicality. The, the, the three Akashic forces that is an action that occurs mechanically in any human, human being. And in order to understand this, we have to talk about the cosmic octave in relation with the ray of Okidanok. The cosmic octave in which we find the seven notes of the musical scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, or si, if you want. Sometimes they say si, sometimes they say ti. The main point here is, as you can see, that the note fa, is among the seven notes and is directly related to the rune fa. And our spinal medulla and the two chords, ida pingala. And this is how we have to see it. It is profoundly significant that in Hebrew, in order to say hand, you said yad. And in order to say arm, you said yad. So the same word for arm and hand is yad, which is the first letter of the holy name of God, yod, hey, bab, hey. And many times we explain 
the relationship of this holy name with our spinal column. And this is very profoundly, so you, use, you have to concentrate on this in order to comprehend the beauty of this ruin. The ray of creation emanates, as you see, as you remember, from the Ein Sof. The absolute has three aspects. The Ein, which is nothing. The Ein Sof, which is the limitless. And the Ein Sof Or, which is the lim limitless light. Which is a ray of Okidanok. The ray of creation. In which the seven notes are hidden. It is stated that the first sound or the first note <coughs> vibrates in the absolute. The note do. But since that ray is descending into matter, not ascending, then you don't say do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si. You said do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Backwards, because this is the, the, the dissension. So the note C of that scale, cosmic scale, related with the word, with the sound, remember in the beginning was the word. The note C, of course, relates to the infinite. And the note Do relates to all the suns. S U N, sun which form the solar absolute within the abstract space. The next note in that octave is the note La, which relates to the galaxy. Any galaxy in itself is part of that infinite, which is the note C. Within the galaxy, we find our solar system. And any solar system that vibrates with the note Sol. Now, that ray descends more, and we find the planetary zone. Any planet vibrates with a note fa. So that is the dissension of that marvelous ray of creation into our planetary zone. But in order for any planet of the infinite, of the galaxy or solar system, to transform that solar force, which is what we call the cosmic Christ, because remember that that is precisely the other name that we give to this Okidanok, or ray of creation, cosmic Christ, which is the origin of everything. In order for that solar light to be transformed in any planet, that planet needs organic life. It's not possible to transform the solar force without the organic life, which we synthesize into mineral, plant, animal, and humans, in the four kingdoms. That's why the earth itself, or any planet, is called Malkut. So we are part of that organic life of the earth that is necessary in order for this planet to transform the solar forces that comes from the absolute, from the infinite, from the macrocosmos or galaxy, and from the solar system, all the planets. Without that organic life, it will be impossible to transform that energy 
So therefore, the organic life, in this case, our physicality, our physical body, vibrates with a note, me. So we are me. But that ray of creation has to descend more into the very center of the earth in order to give the last note of that cosmic octave, which is a note re, which is the infernal worlds or the infernal dimensions, the inferior dimensions, with a note re. If you remember the laws related with this cosmic scale, you find that the absolute do is one law. The infinite, which are all the galaxies, is three laws, the note C. Then the macro cosmos, which is the galaxy, the note la, with six las. Then the solar system with 12 las. Then the zone, planetary zone, the planet, with 24 las. The note fa. The note mi, 48 las. That's why the Master Samael explains very clearly that these 40 las in our microorganism are related to the 48 chromosomes. 46 physical and 2 vital or ethereal. So then we find that we are between the planetary zone that transform all the forces of the megalocosmos through the organic life Plant kingdom, mineral kingdom, animal kingdom. And we ourselves also do it. Now, the other uh, energies of the solar ray end in hell, or in the infra dimensions called inferno, which means from inferior. And they vibrate with the 96 loss. Remember that, the 96 loss. Those 96 loss are related with our protoplasmic bodies. We have within our physicality other bodies. Those other bodies are called mental body and emotional body which is atomic and molecular, and that relates to the mechanicity of nature. Those vibrate with the not ray, and that nature needs in order to transform and give a consistency of rock to the interior of the planet in which we live. That happens not only in the planet Earth, those 96 laws are everywhere, in every planet. Of course, this is how you comprehend and understand that this physical body that we have, plus the mind and, and emotion, molecular and atomic, protoplasmic bodies, belongs to nature. We receive these bodies, internal bodies, protoplasmic bodies, since the beginning of evolution, from the mineral kingdom until this level in which we are. And the evolution of this physicality is also comes from the mineral kingdom until this level in which we are. But we belong to the earth, to the organic life of the earth, not only physically, but also internal. So that's why we are transformers of energy. And this is what the Master Samael states in many, in many lectures. We are transformers of energy, physically speaking. 
and also psychologically speaking. So what we do, our life, is just a service for this planet, for the ray of creation to manifest. Everything happens to us according to that, that octave. But of course, our mission is to make of that cosmic octave a conscious action, no mechanical. And that is precisely what we call the realization of the self in each of those nodes. And that implies, as Master Samanet explains and other masters, two shocks. First shock and second shock. We are going to talk about specifically about the first shock because this is what is important for us. We can talk about the second two, but the main one is here, which occurs between the note fa and the note me. In other words, between the planet and me. Between that solar force, which is in the planet, and myself, which is an organic machine. And to take advantage of it. Because this energy enters mechanically in everybody, and nobody takes advantage of it. And this precisely this knowledge that teaches us how to take advantage of that solar light, of that Christ. Remember that it's written that only Christ save, save us from this mechanicity in which we are. It's not a matter of believing in that cosmic force. But to make that cosmic force our own transformation. And that's why the rune fa is the first that appears in this futhark. Because it gives us the clue, like, you want to help, to be helped? Well, the rune fa will help you. But you have to understand the relation of this rune with your physicality, your psychology, and with the universe. And that is only possible if you, make, uh, uh, if you receive a shock, a shock in your consciousness. Because usually, we receive this energy as the trees receive them, as the animals receive them, because everybody is an antenna in this organic life of this planet. And the planet needs it in order to transform the energies from above the other cosmoses. Whether you like it or not, that is a law. That's why it is written that when somebody starts to work and making consciousness of this cosmic octave in himself, the whole universe will fight against him. Because you had to make that light to return. Not to allow it to go down into hell, into the other layers. And to disintegrate the matter, because that's the mechanicity. After that wrong ray in hell, you find the absolute again, which is nothing. The all, in other words. So in the end, that ray returns into the all. All far. The alpha. But we had to return that cosmic scale in ourselves by doing do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si. Beginning with the physical body. That implies a great effort. And you have to see it why. Our physicality has its physical senses. This physical world is for us according to our five senses. The solar light is sound. The beginning was the word. You hear the sound of the fire 
or that far, that for hot, through your ears. You see it through your eyes. You smell it through your nose. You taste it through your tongue. And you touch it through your skin and arms, hands, and all the organs which find in the surface of your physicality. So behold, this physical world is that a transformation that we receive mechanically. Without the five senses, you will receive this physical world. You will know that it exists. Thanks to the five senses, you know that it exists. That's why it is written in the book of Genesis that God, which is that cosmic force modifying different levels, created the Garden of Eden. And many times we have stated that the Garden of Eden is the organic life, the solar light that is transforming that organic life. And we are in it, in that organic life. And that's why the book of Genesis states that God made every tree that is pleasant to the sight. If you know about the quanta phenomena, you know that the light, the solar light, expresses itself in different levels according to our senses. There are certain lights that are not perceived to the physical senses, that are above the vibrations of this physicality and below as well. That's why when people talk about hell, they want to find hell in this physical world. This is, this is wrong. It's ludicrous. Because inferior, inferno, means those worlds or light below the 48 lusts, below the physicality, the physical senses. So uh, the inferior uh, lusts related with inferno relate to the protoplasmic bodies. And those protoplasmic bodies have the sense to see them. Unless you develop in this physical world certain senses in order to see not only the infra light, but the ultraviolet light. But everything is vibration. Because that light vibrates in different matters. And that's why we perceive it. Every tree which is pleasant to the sight. This word pleasant in Hebrew is nahemot. That is called also nahema. That's why the world, this physical world, is called the world of nahema. The evil beauty. That light that entices us. And we get in love with it. Because if you see, for instance, a young person, that light is giving that person beauty in their physicality. It's a tree, pleasant to the sight. Like any tree in the plant kingdom, that is pleasant to the sight when it's full with solar energy. Flowers, roses, fruits that smells and everything. And that we enjoy. And that nature gives us that in order for, to entice us. That. So, we receive that every day. Every creature receives that. But then the rune fa, or the shock that we had to give to our consciousness, teach us that we had to take that light for our, own, for our own purpose. And for that, we had to do a super effort. We need telema, willpower. We need the rune thorn or dawn. Without telema, which is a virtue related to the consciousness, we cannot give that shock, not, not receive it. Because that is not something that is going to occur mechanically. That the Kundalini, like many people think, will awake mechanically all of a sudden. We have to know this cosmic octave in order to know why we have to do that. The ray of creation ends in hell. And that's why we said that the very center of, the, of hell or inferno is a ninth sphere. We always talk about the ninth sphere, which is the center of the earth. 
That's the end of the ray of creation. But our physicality relates to that with our sexuality. In our sex, which is a nice sphere, Yesod, is where we find the very center of our own particular cosmos, microcosmos, our physicality. If we allowed nature to go mechanically through us, what is what are we going to do with our sexual force that relates to the same vibration of the night sphere with the note re? What will we do? We will multiply. It's what the animals do. It's what the plants do. Multiplication of the organic life in order for this planet to keep existing in the space. And this is something that comes from desire, from our own nature, within. So then, it is necessary to go in the very bottom of the end of that ray, which is the ninth sphere, and to return that light by will, for our own benefit. That's why it is written that it is necessary to descend to the night sphere in order to receive the initiation. But that dissension, that descent has to be conscious by our own will. And when you do that, it means to go in the sexual act, the very center of the ray, the very bottom of the ray of creation. But it is the abode of Lucifer, light and fire. And what is what we have to do? We have to return that fire, not to let it go like me mechanically as it does, and to be dissolved into hell. We want to return it and to awake the Kundalini, to awake that Christ inside of us in our spinal column by utilizing telema. That's why it's difficult. Because all the centripeted, centripet forces that go from the periphery to the center are going to fight against us. Because we are fighting against the planetary zone and the universe. We, had, we want to make that cosmic ray to vibrate into sound, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, in our spinal column. That is not easy. You have to fight against your own nature. And that nature, of course, is your, your own physicality, your own mind, your own emotion. That nature makes for its own purpose. And that's why In the next graphic of this room far, we wrote or we gave this graphic, replaced this graphic. When you find the two or oh, the seven nodes, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, in relation with the seven chakras or the seven churches over the book of Revelation, and the two uh, chords name Ida Pingala, which are forming two hands, which is the name of God, the Yod, which is the beginning of initiation. In the book of uh, Zahariah, chapter 4, verse 9, it is written, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Who is Zerubbabel? It's related to that ray of creation. That, that force, cosmic Christ, that got very down and that are the foundation of our own physicality. But if we want to create something within, his hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that Yodhava Zabaot hath sent me unto you. In which way the hands of God will finish his work? 
mechanically this physicality was created. But now the creation that we want to make is by the hands of God. That's why in the previous lecture I told you that I was seeing in the internal planes the hands of somebody else that says these hands are the hands of a master, of a God. But you have to understand that those hands are not physical hands. Relates to Ida and Pingala, to the two witnesses of the book of Revelation. Those are the hands that God utilizes. Those are the hands of God. That's why when you talk about Ida Pingala in the star of uh, the microcosmic star, the pentagram, you find that they are related to the sun and to the moon. To the father, the son, and to the moon, the mother. In the PC Sophia, Master Jesus points at these two hands as two angels. The angel Michael, which is the sun, and the angel Gabriel, which is the moon. And he says in Pisces Sophia, these are the angels which are in charge of the work that we had to do, of salvation. You had to understand and comprehend that those two arms or hands of these two angels, Gabriel and Michael, are your two cords, Ida and Pingala, that we talk many times in different, in different lectures about it. The sun and the moon. And that's why in this other verse, or Psalm 24, is written, Who shall ascend into the hill of Yod Chava, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that clean, that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor who uh, no soon, soon deceitfully, deceitfully. He that received the blessings from Yod Chava and righteousness from Elohim Jesus, or the or Yeshua, in other words, the Savior. To go up to the hill. What is that? To go into the hill of Yod Chava. Jehovah, the Holy Spirit. To go there means the pineal gland. To rise the sexual force to the pineal gland. Because that's the very top. Remember that we said that in the pineal gland we have the atom of the Holy Spirit. In our physicality. Only with clean hands we can go there. People used to wash their hands in different rituals. In order to go and to do this practice or this ritual according to uh, their religion. But to, to have clean hands doesn't mean to clean your physical hands. Have clean your two cores. Your two channels, the two arms, the two hands. Those are... The arms have to be clean. But if, you, if we are fornicators, if we let nature to go through us like any animal, we don't have clean hands. Because the one that creates, that makes the internal universe in each one of us, is the Ruach Elohim that floats or hoovers upon the waters. Ma'im or Mim. That is the Yod between the two Mems of our sexuality. These two Mems of our sexuality are the two testicles and the two ovaries. That Yod is a solar force that descends from above into our physicality. That's why you see the necessity of Pranayama. Many uh, students in the past, when they discover that these two cords are related with the testicles in the ovaries, they sought to retain that solar force of the sperm in ovum just by celibacy. And that's wrong. Because we have to transmute it, we have to transform it with pranayama or sexual magic in order to release that ray of creation. 
Because only by creating is how we can go up. And the one that creates are these three forces. Shushumna, Ida, and Pingala in our spinal column. We have to awaken. And that's the mystery of the rune fa with the two arms. We had to return it up. And that's why it is written, For he shall give his angels, Michael and Gabriel, of course, related to Ida and Pingala, charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. You see? Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. That phrase is repeated in the Gospels. When Satan in, is tempting Jesus. If you are a son of God, well, throw yourself down. Means fornicate. Right? You can do that. Mm -hmm. Jesus was not stupid. He says, it is written... That the one that sustains me, Shushumna, in the spinal column, is Ida and Pingala, those angels. I can go down, but not to fornicate, not to spill, not to reach the orgasm. But Satan, the mind, the protoplasm mind, always tempts us. Do that. Follow the mechanical world, the mechanical way. Fornicate. It's difficult because that temptation goes through the protoplasmic bodies that we have within. We have to defeat it. And that's a great work. We have to go into hell. Every time that we want to reach another octave within that cosmic octave, we have to go to hell. Why? Because from hell is how we take the force because that's the end of the ray of creation. Our sexuality, the ninth sphere. From there we take it in order to go up. Those people that think that they can go up just by praying or just by believing, they're wrong. We have to go to, we have to, to the center of the earth in order to go up every time, seven times. Seven notes, seven bodies, seven octaves. And all of that is what we call the first crisis. The Master Samael calls that in the revolution of the dialectic, the first crisis. It's a long process of creation in which we utilize the two forces. But let us now go into this marvelous prayer. Now you understand why the next graphic is showing us that the left arm is a little bit above the right. Why? Because the left cord, Ida, is the one that connects sexuality to the pineal gland. And the right cord, Pingala, the right arm of God, is the one that connects the sex with the root of the nose. Here the root of the nose is the end of Pingala. Which is the root of the father. But the mother is in the pineal gland. The Holy Spirit. And that's why. In this sacred posture. As you can see there. Is where we have to pray. Marvelous forces of love. Revive my sacred fires. So that my conscience will awaken. When you read that prayer, you have to be conscious of what are you doing. Those marvelous forces of love are the sexual forces that enter through your nostrils and through all your physicality. And that goes down and is transformed into sperm or ovum, into semen. This is what you have to understand. So when you are doing that, you are fecundating your own nature. 
consciously the forces of the Father into your own consciousness. You are doing it consciously, not mechanically. Because mechanically, everybody does it. When you put your arms in front of the sun like that, you have to understand that those two hands symbolize your Ida and Pingala. And that you are invoking those forces that enter into your nostrils in Ida, Pingala, and Shushumna, the three levels of that fire, of that father. In order to awaken your consciousness. That's the first shock. In relation with this rune, of course. But not only with this rune, you will make the first shock in you. That is between Fa and me. I am an organic life. I am the note me. And the planetary sun is Fa. I don't want to be an organic life, mechanical. And to keep down there into hell if I fall on this mechanicity. I want to return into the absolute. For that then, you have to give a shock. Shock. Between Fa and me. Which, what is between Fa and me? It's your consciousness. That which nature does mechanically in every body, in every tree, in any mineral, you are going to do it now, consciously. You will purposely attract more energy into your body through your arms, through your hands, which are Ida Pingala, and to strike your consciousness and teach it to return that fire to the absolute because you want to receive cognizance of that. You want to make that ray within you cognizant, conscious. And that's why the first shock is related with the self-remembering. You have to remember yourself. But if you think that yourself is your mind, then nature is just laughing about you. Because your mind is protoplasmic. And nature is utilizing that mind for its own purpose. If you think that your emotions, my self-esteem, my, my pride, my vanity, which it says there in the, in the Psalms, you are feeling that you are identified too much with your physicality. You think that that is yourself, you're wrong. That's a false self. That is what the Buddha called desire. Because through that, Trees pleasant to the sight, you feed your desire, which is na mechanical nature. Every time that you feel desire, you feel nice, with pleasure. But that is nature. Now you have to do that sensation with willpower. Willpower sensation means to receive the same energy with your consciousness and to receive that pleasure in your soul and for that you have to remember yourself that self is your monad is your being you have to remember God and to observe self-observation that's why it is written that that's the first shock self-remembering remembering the self remembering God and self-observation Observing the mind, that mind that thinks that, he, that it is the self and is not. That heart that thinks it is the self and is not. Because we have too many egos that belong to the mechanicity of nature. That do the work of nature. In this day and age, everybody is fitting those egos, following the mechanicity of nature. They also can receive the solar force through those egos, yes. And the ego will squander that. As you know. But by doing this room, by remembering yourself and observing your mind, you pronounce that in front of the solar light. That Christ. Because Christ is not a person, it's a force. That is everywhere. 
marvelous forces of love penetrate to my hands, to my nostrils, to my sight, to my ears. But I want to be here now in order to take care of it. Because if you forget yourself, then the mechanicity of nature, which is within you, which is your mind and your emotions, will take care of it and will feed your desires. And fat with a lot of desires, you will go into the not ray and in all the layers of hell in order for nature to take that energy to give consistency of rock to the interior of the planet. If that is what you want, that mechanicity of that ray of creation will go down. And that's what the Absolute wants, because he created this universe. Between the ends of, from which this ray of creation emerges, and the nothing, which is after hell, which is Ain, the ray of creation, which is the sun. That is what we call the circle <coughs> of terrible necessity. This is how it is called. The circle of the terrible, or the, or the cycle, in other words. The cycle of the terrible necessity. Why? Because the solar absolute wants to create, it wants to be conscious of that in each one of us. So the dissension of that from the absolute to, the, to, to hell is necessary. It's a necessity for the ray of creation. Because in order for us to be conscious, cognizant of that, we had to return in every single sphere until reaching the absolute. That's why when you reach there, you are cognizant of that ray. You receive self-realization of what? Of that in you. But that implies creation. You have to create. What I run far relates to creation. But that rune fa, which is the spinal column and the arms, that's the fa in you. And it's the fa in me. And it's the fa in everything. That's why it's called all fas. Or alpha. And omega. Om. Aum. You see there how everything is hidden in that beautiful mantra, Omega, Om. But that begins from the Aleph, which is the All Fas. So the All Fas, in other words, is the All Fathers. I have my father, you have your father, your Fa. All Fas is Christ. It's called the father of all fatherhood. And that's why all is whole, which is also holy. The holy, the holy, the holy. The all. That's the father, the absolute. Which enters into us, and that's the alpha. All the runes fa. My rune fa, your rune fa, and every rune's fa. Mm -hmm. This is how you have to understand this marvelous rune in relation with the alphabet or with the futhark. Now see the next graphic. The rune fa is rightly in opposition to the rune os. If the rune fa has the arms up, the rune also has the arms down. Which is telling us that in order for us to take advantage of that force that enters through the rune fa, the father, we have to worship the mother, the o. It comes into my mind, eo. 
the solar lunar androgenism. I, the Father, O oh, the Mother. And here we find the holy name of God, Yod Hava. So the rune Oz is a uterus. Relates to our own particular individual uterus. That's showing us exactly at the level of sex again. Remember that we talk about that in previous lectures. About the other runes. The rune uh, laugh, which is life. But the rune laugh, which is life, has the, the palms of the hands uplifted. It's another meaning. And also the rune ear, which is the rune uh, of uh, or the Y or the Z. The Z is called also in the runic alphabet, which is have the arms a little bit open, but also with the palms facing up. But this rune also has the palms facing down. And that implies the power of the uterus. The woman. The rune also is, 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 is the uterus. The woman. Because all the forces that the woman receives from the far develops the fetus in, in her womb, in the os. But we have to take advantage of that. The rune fa, the father, and the rune os, the mother, in each one of us. Because with the two polarities, which always relate to Shushumna Idaim Pingala, the father. Shushumna Idaim Pingala, the mother, but in opposition. Many times we show you, and I told you, that this duality, father mother, emerges from the Trinity. That Trinity here is the spinal column with the two arms, facing up or facing down. Bear that in mind and comprehend that, because that is what the Lord said in the book of Revelation. I am Alpha, all fast, and Omega, the womb. The beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty, that Almighty, of course, is called El Shaddai, the sexual force. So when you see this, Alpha and Omega is to let it in the fourth arc with the rune Fa and the rune Os. Related with your own physicality. Now, let me tell you one, because it's coming into my mind now. So I have to tell you now. About the rune Os. The master explains how to perform the rune. He says... Look very careful, the two runes, the rune uh, Os and the rune Otila, in order to comprehend how to do the movements of the rune Os. The rune Os if you go down into the graphics, when you find three human bodies, the right human body, very down, I guess is the last, is the last of the, of the graphics. Yeah, it's the very last of the graphics. In the very bottom, you find the rune thorn or thorn, the rune os, and then again, the rune otila with the two arms on the waist. This is how the master describes, observe the two symbols or graphics of the rune os in order to understand how you have to practice this uh, runic exercise with the rune thorn. And uh, I was reading and reading it and because 
Personally, I forgot to talk with the master about it. <coughs> so I said, I'm going to meditate. And I will ask my own master, show me what is this rune Oz related with Fa, related with Thorn, and with the mantra and this rune, which is the Thorn, with power. Well, I, all, I said already what, what he told me in my meditation until now. But I was receiving all of that information and the last symbol that I saw in the astral plane was a uh, spinning Jesus. You might say, oh Jesus, the master of Eramento, 2,000 years ago, was spinning in front of you? No. When I said spinning Jesus, I'm talking about Yeshua, the Savior, the solar light. That is not a person. But takes the shape in this planet Earth, of Master Jesus, to show it, because he is a vehicle of the Master. Could take the shape also of the Master Samael, because he's a vehicle also. Master Samael is a vehicle of that Yeshua, Savior. But that Savior is the astral light, which you are explaining here, that had to return and to awake your consciousness. So I saw that spinning Jesus penetrating into the Earth. Penetrating into the earth. And it was shining like that. And I said, what is this? I, in that moment, I returned to my physical body. Okay, my God told me that. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And that, from that 2 o'clock in the morning, I started receiving the whole film. Like my father telling me. This is what you have to receive right now because if I tell you internally, maybe you will forget. I understand that. So from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, 2 hours, I was receiving and receiving information. And I said, oh my goodness, I, I, I need to sleep. But it says, <laughs> I, I said to my God, no offense, just keep doing it, keep doing it. I asked you, now you are telling me. And then what is this? What is that? And in, from inside, you know, the information. It was so simple that I didn't see it. You know what I mean? It says, the rune thorn with the two like otila like that is the shape of a key. Maybe you see, when you have a key, they have the shape. The legs are the inside of what you have to put inside in order to open the door. I'll say, oh, door. Yeah, from there comes the root of the word door. That, by the way, has two O's. But you don't say door. He says, why door? Because you open that door with the two O's, the two O's, the man and the woman, the forces of sex that point there. You see? And when you do that, you turn, thorn, turn. Because if you put the key inside the key holder and you don't turn it, you don't open the door. Isn't it? Yes, I said, yeah. I have to turn the key in order to open the door. The same you have to do. The forces that you have there, turn it in order to open the door. You remember? Sex, the secret gate of heaven, the video, well, that is the gate. You have your keys, and we already talked about that the keys of heaven are in the hands of Peter, and that Peter has the power of opening and closing the doors of heaven. Didn't we say that? Here, precisely, we have the graphic of Peter. In Matthew chapter 16, the master, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, is saying to Peter, and I said unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth 
shall be loosed in heaven. In other lectures already, I told you that those keys are in Apingala. You have to use those keys. It's Peter the one, but it's in the pineal gland. In the pineal gland, we have Peter. Many times we said that in the beginning of that uh, Matthew chapter 16, it is written, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? So I, that I, the Son of Man am. And they said, Well, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. We say, always have an opinion. And then he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? You see, that question is directly to your conscience. And the only one that answered right says, And from the pineal gland, which I always state, Peter is in the pineal gland, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of the doll. That means Barjona, son of the doll, thou of the Holy Spirit, which is in the pineal gland. For flesh and blood had not revealed unto thee, but my Father, the Holy Spirit, which is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is the revealer. And Peter received that information. You are the son of the living God. Because he's seen the, the Christ, the force. And then Jesus said, well, I, I will give you the keys. And in the other lectures, we show you that Peter was crucified upside down. In order to show you that telema, willpower, in your pineal gland, will control your sexual forces. In order to open the doors of heaven. Many of you know, because uh, in the Catholic Church, they said that when you die... Peter will, will wait for you in heaven. And we say, yeah, it's right. When you die psychologically, Peter wait there in the pineal land for you. Because every time that personally I have an experience as Samadhi, I enter through my pineal land, which is the door, into heaven and see what I see. And any of you can enter into the, into the heavens through your pineal gland, because they are the seat of the soul. The Son of Man is the soul united with the Lord, which is fire. And Peter is in the pineal gland, and the seat of the soul is the pineal gland. You see? The human soul, Telema, sit on the pineal gland, the seat of the soul, according to the card. And there is Peter, the apostle. And the Son of Man is united with Christ there. Now you understand why that verse says that the Son of God uh, and the Holy Spirit, God, reveals that unto you. Then I understood that in order to enter into those levels of heaven, you have to do it with the help of Peter. Peter will build your temple, your church, with a sexual force that you control with Telema, with the Holy Spirit. That's the first shock to build that. But also the first shock is related with self-remembering and self-observation in order to die, in order to meditate and comprehend the ego. And the keys of that are in the rune fa and rune os, which are the two keys. The rune fa is the alpha and the rune os is the omega that are in the hands of Peter. But that, those, uh, those uh, two keys are the Lord. Because the Lord said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. And also, that is in relation with the key of David. Which is a star of six points related with the rune uh, Otila. And as you see there, we put another variation of the rune Oz in the very bottom. 
with the open, right, forming the otila, which is the very end of the food tark, which is already with the omega, or the big O. The big O is made in this way. You open the legs and you put your hands over your chest, I mean, over your waist, in order to make the two triangles with your elbows. When you make two triangles with your elbows, you are doing two dalets of the Hebrew alphabet. I mean, I'm talking about the ancient Hebrew alphabet. Because now, of course, it's doing in different shape. But the very all is coming from the runes. That D of the Hebrew alphabet is a triangle. But if you have two Ds forming there with the two elbows, what do you have between those two elbows or those two Ds? You have your spinal column, which is the letter Vav, according to the Hebrew alphabet, right? Or the letter Drun Isis, or the Drun Is, according to the Futhark. But anyhow, what do you read there in that shape of that man there? Read it. One D there, another D there with the other elbow in the middle of the letter I. What is the word that you read there? Hmm? David. Right? Because the Bab is the B. This is how you write in Hebrew. David is a rune of Tila. That's David. And that's what is written there. That the key of David in the book of Revelation, and also we wrote another uh, uh, quotation there of Isaiah. You can read Isaiah 22, verse 22 and 23, that relates to the same Revelation, chapter 3, 7 and 9 verse. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, eh? Otila. He that opens and no man shut it, and shutteth and no man opened. And who does that? Peter as well. Isn't it? He says, whatever you open in the earth, will you open in heaven. If you shut on earth, we shut in heaven too. So Peter and the Lord are there interrelated with the two keys, the two Fa and Os, Alpha and Omega. That's the mystery of the word. So then, going back into my experience, he says, now you see why the Savior, the light force of Christ, the cosmic Christ, turned into the earth. That earth is the us, is the O, the big O, which is your body. The woman, if you want to, because if you want to penetrate the woman, the big O, you need to be one key. Because the woman is the other key. United both keys, Alpha and Omega, you find the mystery of the key of David. Turn. Return the energy upwards. Because if you spill the solar force in your sperm, in your ovum, you reach the orgasm, you lose so don't snooze, because if you snooze, you lose. We have to wake. And then, then I understood that the Master Samael says that. And in the internal sense, they show me. First, the rune thorn. You put your arm, I mean your hand over your waist. Forming the good thorn, which means willpower, drama. And that's the first graphic that you see in the very bottom of the graphic. That, uh, which is at the very end of these uh, graphics that we are showing. The very end. The first is the rune thorn or dorn, which makes like this. Then, what do you have to do? You have to combine that rune with movement. You put your two arms down. And those two arms are making the lower part of the key. You see? 
Because first you are doing the upper part, down the lower part. But when you that lower part is done, you turn to your left. Because the left is the O. Hmm? The left is the woman, the right is the man. Gabriel is the moon. Michael is the sun. So you start with telema like that and you turn to your left. You just turn your waist to your left. Because in order to open the door, you have to turn the key. Hmm? You have to turn. That is called olin, movement. And when you do that, you pronounce torn. The mantra torn, or turn, in other words, which means to turn. And when you do that, you open the door. The two O's, or the word door. This is what I was shown, why, why in English that word has two O's. Because it's an exception of the rule. But in this sense, it makes sense. In this way it makes sense. Because it's the two forces, the two polarities. Off. Hmm? Remember, you don't turn your feet, only the waist. Like that. Then when you want to return again in order to do it, and then you place both hands in the waist and then you are making the shape of the key very well and when you do that you breathe you do your pranayama and then you turn again turn to your left because the left is the O the left is the planetary zone where the Lord has to enter and to mix but when you return again to make straight your body with the two hands over your waist you are transmuting you are returning the force of the Lord that is entering into the earth into the center up to the spinal column and that's the clue of the rune or the practice of the, of the rune os you always turn like that and pronounce the mantra I'm torn as many times as you want when you turn down. You see? When you are turning your hands down to the left. And then you return and breathe. Inhale. Turn to the left. Go down in order for that key to open. Do you understand? I mean, I'm showing you that physically here in front, but uh, I don't know if the people that are in the website are understanding this turning. It's the waist, the only part that turned. It's a good exercise, by the way, in order to lose some uh, fat <laughs> in your waist. Mm -hmm. But it's a way in which you transmute, right? This is how you transmute the sexual force by fecundating it. And you have to remember the self. You have to observe the self. Because remember that this movement of the arms. Down and up. Like thorn and down and that. You are moving the forces of your Ida and Pingala. This is how you have to understand. Ida and Pingala. Are the arms. Are the hands that you are using. You are using physical hands of course in your arms. But you have to understand that when you are doing that, that, those hands are connected to the hands of God. To the two witnesses. Which according to some esotericists, they say that is, uh, they, they are the two witnesses. Moses and Elias. Elias is the son, Elios. And Moses is the moon. They're open. By doing that and transmuting and using the hands of God, you will prophesy. The two witnesses have the power of pro prophecy, of seeing things, because the two witnesses open the seven chakras, the seven notes of the scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, within you. And that's the shock. That's the first shock that has to be repeated seven times, because that's the man. Let me show you. The other graphics 
or we will say, yeah, the other, uh, you find the, the runotila, variation of os and Aztec olin. You find, for instance, when we do the vocalization of the vowels, that we form the otila rune with the hands united, the palms above the head. That's a variation. And that's O as well. But in this rune, Oz, you do that shape with the legs together and the hands over your waist. That's another variation. The other variation is when you open, you open the, the, the legs with the hands of your waist. So there are many variations of the physical body by doing the rune otila. Above the head, on your waist hands, with the legs together or with the open legs. It's always the same rune, but in combination with the rune thorn or the rune dorn in Germany, which comes from donar, doner, the son of Odin, which is the god of thunder. That thunder is the lightning bolt that has to rise. Comes from above. That lightning bolt of donor is a ray of creation that comes from above inside your body. But then you return that lightning bolt upwardly in order to fecundate your consciousness. Why? Because the seat of the soul is a pineal gland. Remember that. Because in order to remember yourself, the self, you have to do it from the pineal gland because that is the seat of your soul. When you remember yourself, when you observe yourself, the chakra sahasrara, the pineal gland, is spinning. You are becoming conscious, self-consciousness. Self-cognizance is better to self. Because in English, we say self-conscious means something wrong. Self-cognizant. In the pineal gland. When you are doing that self-remembrance and self-observation, you are fortifying your pineal gland. Now you understand with these two keys why it is written in the book of Revelation. And the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. What key? You know what the key is. The key is Idap in Gala in Shushumna. That's the key. Hmm? And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that whole serpent, which is devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Laid hold of that mind that we have. To control our emotions in mind is that Satan. But we had to awake the energy and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years shall be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. I mean, esoterically speaking, the first shock is related with the 96 last. You want to avoid to fall into the 96 last that comes after you or after me, which is the same. Being re, you don't want to go to re, annihilate that re within you, 96 last, those egos that belong to that. And then you return and triumphant with the first crisis, the first shock. It's a long. And then you are re ready for the second crisis or the second shock. But that is very advanced. Talking here in the very esoteric way of the runes. Because the second shock is between C and Do. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. Another octave. That second shock, of course, is also in the lower level given in every initiation. But the first one is what we need. 
Because why we want to perform the second shock when the first one that we had to do is the, the, the one that is the returning of the sexual energy. That's why many practitioners of esotericism that wants to awake their consciousness, they commit the mistake of fornicating, of spilling the sexual force, reaching the orgasm and practicing the different clues. They don't know that the one that gives that shock is the solar absolute, is the creator of creation, the cosmic Christ, which is fa, fire, which is fa, the father. And only by returning him, because he is light. The Lord said, or that cosmic Christ, which was incarnated in Jesus of Nazareth, he said this, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world that is transformed through any tree, through any animal, through any mineral, that solar light that vibrates with a note fa. I am that alpha and omega, the sexual force, the omega. That's the almighty force. So in order to give the first shock into our consciousness, we have to do that. And then we understand why Samael, the archangel, has the keys. Because Samael rules Arius, is the head. Arius ruled the head. And in the head is Peter. In the, in the head is the pineal gland. In the head is the Holy Spirit. He has the keys there. Also of Omega, because Samael rules the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio ruled the sexual genitalia. So Samael rules two signs, zodiacal signs, Aries and Scorpio. Aries is Alpha, and Scorpio is Omega. That's why only he is the one that can open and give the mysteries of Alpha and Omega, or the keys of the bottomless pit. That bottomless pit is the not re. You can go there if you don't have the keys. And those keys also relate to Peter. And David, which is a symbol of your body. Well, if you read the book of Revelation, you will find in the chapter 1, from the verse 8 to the 18, all the mystery of the two keys, Alpha and Omega. And uh, you can find the practices of the rune Fa and the rune Oz in the book, The Gnostic Magic of the Rune, by the Master Samael on the Or. Do you have questions? Yes? How does it affect us? Because we always say that the, uh, the laws of the uh, inferior spheres are already penetrating us You meant the 96 laws? Yes. Well, we, we may, in many lectures we said that. We have to be conscious, cognizant of that. We, right now, consciously speaking, we belong to the note re, 96 laws. How much do we have of those 96 laws inside? A little bit more than 96, 97. 97 <coughs> parts of the ego. How much do we have of, of this uh, uh, me? We have 3%. That's why you, you, when you remember me, when you remember yourself, you do it with 3%. You have to use a lot of willpower. 
and to fight against the dragon, which is 97%. Self-remembering, self-observation, annihilation of the ego, in order to be rid of the 96 last, because we belong to the 96 last. We have this physical body, thank goodness, that belongs to me, the 48 last. But who is utilizing this 48 lives of the physical body? Is not the ego, perhaps? See the story of this planet. And the calamities which are happening around us. Hell is controlling the physical world, our physicality. It is rare to find, for instance, a being whose physicality is utilizing by the solar force of other lives above the 48 like 24, like 12, like for instance, Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama is the one that is utilizing the superior forces in the physical world, but he is fighting against millions of physical bodies that are channeling the 96 laws and, and more laws of the infernal world. And they think that through greed, covet, Covetousness, pride, self-esteem. This is how you developed yourself, your ego, but not yourself. That's unfortunately. So we had to fight very strongly. The shock that we had to give to ourselves is from moment to moment, from instant to instant. Because the forces that we had to fight against are inside of us. Inside of us and outside. So if you defeat yourself inside, the forest outside will be defeated too. But people want to defeat outside, thinking that because they are defeating outside and making big groups, they are doing better. No. If you don't defeat yourself, no matter if you have a million of followers, if you have one follower that is doing the same that you're doing, if I think that you are doing that, right? the first shock, chastity, and die. That's a shock between find me, between me and the planet. Because if we allow the planet to follow the sequence of forces in my body, I will go down like millions that are going down. So this work is individual. Everyone for himself. But there is one that is helping us. is the Lord. And the Lord enters every time. What we eat, what we think, into the impressions. You have another question. I didn't catch how you went from uh, with that exercise from the one hip to the two hips. Mm -hmm. Okay, he says that he, he didn't realize from one hip to the two hips, or one arm in the waist for the two arms in the waist. You begin like that. When you start, the, you are beginning. The, the practice of the, of the rune thorn, you put the right hand on your waist and the other arm down. This is how you begin. Then you breathe. And then you turn to your left and put the two arms and do the shape of the rune os. Thorn. Now, when you return to do this again, the same exercise, you put both arms. And you want to do the shape of the, of the, the rune otila. Two arms. Two hands on the waist. And then you continue like that. But the first is just by doing, because that means this. With this position of the rune thorn, I'm showing you that with my willpower is how I'm going to do this work. And then you do it. And continue doing like that in order to see that you are working with the two polarities of Ida Pingala, the two arms that will sustain you in order not to hurt yourself with the forces of hell. Did you go back to the first one again or no? No. Once you finish, this is it. You give thanks to your God for the transmutation. And you have to imagine that when you pronounce Thorn, the light of the Lord that descends through your nostrils, through the Pingala, goes down into your consciousness, subconsciousness. 
in Frakashana to awaken. Because we need to awake. Read the Gnostic book of uh, runes by the Master Samael on the Or, where he explains that, but as, uh, as I said, this turning that I'm telling you was showed to me, taught to me internally. Because I was really trying to, I was reading and reading and I didn't know how to turn my body. And other, other Gnostics, they, so they, they put the, the right leg out. And this is, I had to put my right leg out and my two arms down. How do I do it? And I was confused. And I said, I don't want to teach something confused to, to in my lecture. You have to tell me in order to teach the right thing. And then he told me. And I said, oh, well, this is so simple that I didn't see it. And then he, with his hand, slapped my head and said, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> is there any uh, cardinal point specific to face when well you have to you have to face always the east remember that we are worshipping the lord remember that our particular son is one of the sons of the solar absolute but when he is or that son that we have here that is related with the solar absolute with the not dull when that sun relates to our planetary sun, and then is soul, the not soul. Hmm? When it enters into us, it's not me. But then we said, please, Lord, start with the not doll, a solar absolute in me. And then to do do re mi fa sol la si to return. This is how, because the Lord can turn in another octave immediately within you. But you don't do it. He continued just mechanically uh, according to the ray of creation. That's the great goal of all monads. To make cognizance of the ray of creation within each one of us. That's self-realization of the Lord. Do we have questions? No more? Yes? What are your questions? Um, I have a, a, a non-esoteric type question. Uh, Initially, you, uh, you seem to be referring to the rune Attila also as Dorn. Does it go as, is that? Yeah. The rune Attila, or the rune Attila, relates to the rune Dorn. And the rune Os together. It's a mixture. You see? Uh -huh. Os and Attila. Because Attila is, as we said in the Greek alphabet, the big Omega. Omega. The Mega O. And the Omicron. Of course, it is a small O. But in this case, we are utilizing the Omicros, Omicron, the small O, which is the rune Os. Right? That is showing us that the little O that we have, which is the rune Os, relates to Ida Pingala and Shushuna with the shape of the rune Os. But when we do the rune Otila, we are making the big O. The omega. And that big O is precisely the two O's, you see. Working with the two O's. The Lord is the big O, omega. We are the small O. And by doing that, we are working with the two forces of the omega. But in the shape of the otila, you see the shape of the rune thorn or door which is willpower. And that's why the rune thorn is combined with a movement, which in Aztec language is called olin. And that's well olin, that's why the fa is related with a and o, alin, olin. Remember that the word al, God, in Hebrew, it's with Aleph and Lamed, all, all far, all fars are related with God, the all. Thank you very much.
To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.